again, I'm going to cover not just colony collapse disorder in this talk, and I'll be around for the uh, most of the day, so catch me if I, if I skim over something fairly quickly and uh, don't cover it adequately for you, ask me some questions about it later. Again, we'll start with some talk about nosema. You've heard quite a bit about nosema lately, and it is on the increase out there, and why is that? The problem is our detection method, the colony has to mount a bunch of different kinds of defenses to fight those things off. Actually, it's very easy to interpret it. Interpret. Um, it really is. Um, all right, so here's our black twin cell virus again. Here's no semen. And look at all the strong black lines that go back and forth. You know what it basically says? That the bees are very sick. The bees are very sick, and they've got everything. Everything is present, you know, in those bees, and they're all trying to take advantage of that host. So you think about yourself. If you get weak, what's going to happen? You're going to try to contract pneumonia, whatever. Things are sitting there ready to go if, if they take advantage of a weak host. And I think that's what's happening with pathogens in this case, the viruses and nosema. It's that they're sitting there waiting. As soon as your bees get weak from varroa, nutrition, pesticide exposure, boom, the pathogen is going to take off. The pathogen, the virus or the nosema or something, may actually do the killing, but they don't, they don't usually do that with strong bees. So we've got a lot of information from these types of tests. Trying to make sense of it sometimes is difficult, but in this case, I think this is just saying that these bees are really, really, and now with the new nosema, obviously, we're going to get positive samples in the summer. But this is, of the samples we receive, two to 3,000 a year, we're getting about 10% are positive for nosema. And if you think about it, we're only getting diseased colonies in. We're not getting, people never send us bee, good bees and say, hey, my bees are doing really well. Here, I want to send you a sample. So um, this is kind of low. In other words, 10% nosema positive to me was kind of low. Look what happens in 07 and 08, even if you take the other states out. There's a rise in nosema levels. The, 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 there's a rise in the number of positive samples over the last few years. Why is that? I don't know. Um, but. We don't solicit any, you know, different. Uh, the only thing, the only caveat to that is that the state of New York has been sending us a few extra samples, and that might skew the New York how we manage it, but also how we look at it as researchers. And we need to begin to look for how these interactions are occurring. And nutrition is, is we think, is a key player in this. And Frank Eichen and Westaco has shown that parasitic mite levels can be higher if the bees are well fed. So I mean, it's just a very simple thing. If the bees have good nutrition they can tolerate a higher parole level. Uh, the same may be true for some of these other interactions. But as researchers, we tend to focus on a single factor, and I think we may be missing some of the picture in doing that. This is a slide from Penn State. Uh, we contributed samples of this. This is uh, what, I think it was, was it Steve who was saying this about the, you know, the, the laundry list of uh, pesticides that you find in pollen samples. If you notice, this is from honeybee pollen from CCD and non-CCD colonies, and this was this is just lumped together. If you look at the most fr uh, frequent pesticides that we found in pollen were fluvalinate and cumafos. Right? Yeah, fluvalinate and cumafos were the two most common. But right behind it is chlorpyrifos. So chlorpyrifos here is right behind there at about over 50% of the, our pollen samples had chlorpyrifos in it. What's That's the source of that? It's an ag chemical. It's just widely used in agriculture to control a, a, a variety of pests. So it's um, it's just used in row crop agriculture and probably in orchards and stuff. The house bees, the bees that were present in the colony, you could detect this material at very low levels. But to me, the interaction is important. A sublethal exposure here uh, didn't result in any changes at the colony level. We couldn't see any difference in these colonies. The colonies looked fine. At the individual bee level, we saw that they, in fact, had more nosema. This is just one possible combination. And I don't want you to get hung up on pesticides. I think I could do the same experiment, and we're trying some of that. I think I could do the same experiment with nutritional stress. I think I could nutritionally stress bees and then challenge them with nosema or challenge them with viruses and get the same kind of result. So what I think the answer lies is in working on this you know, what are these primary stressors in the colony? Is it really varroa mites that are the big issue? Sometimes it may be, or nutrition or pesticide exposure. Um, what are these primary stressors that are leading to what I call secondary pathogen outbreak? So the pathogen, the virus, nosema, or whatever, I'm calling almost a secondary infection. Um, 
We know there's an interaction between varroa and virus levels. I mean, that's already been shown in a number of studies. And so higher varroa levels, you get higher virus titers. What I think is also happening is things like nutrition, pesticide exposure could be aggravating our nutrition. We also surveyed so many bees, it's a fairly accurate number. The problem is, for the commercial beekeeper, and I know a number of you are hobbyists, if you're losing that many bees, that's kind of unsustainable if you're trying to make pollination contracts and stuff. The year before, that number was 31 or 32 percent. So the year before, it was still over 30 percent. I get this question asked all the time. What was it historically? And you, well, some of you know better than I. I keep saying, historically, before varroa mites and, and tracheal mites, it was 5 to 10 percent loss. When we got mites, it was 20 to 25 percent. Is acceptable. I mean, in other words, you can suffer that much, and you might expect that in a good or bad year. Now we're averaging over 30 percent, and something else is going on, and we're, and we're losing bees at a high rate. So now we ask the beekeepers, why do you think you're losing them? Um, Oh, before we get there, i got to show you one other bit related to CCD because we were trying to ask, are these losses abnormal? Are there, is there something really going on? So we asked beekeepers, did their colonies die without, without bees in the colony? So the bees, there was no dead bees present on the bottom board or in the combs. And when we asked that question, 37% of the, the beekeepers that responded to the operations that said they lost bees said they had that symptom. So the, there's 37%, well, let's just say 40% said they died with that symptom. The other one said they didn't die with that symptom. In other words, there's no, we'll call it evidence of CCD. What's probably more important than this 40% of the, of the respondents said they had this symptom was that if they said they had that symptom, look at the average loss within those beekeepers, 41%. So 41%, they, they lost 41% of their colonies this group over here, the majority of the respondents only lost 17%. So that characteristic of losing colonies, the colonies dying without bees present in the colony, seemed to be indicative of higher losses. And in fact, it was higher. Uh, it was indicative of higher losses. But now you've got a question to the beekeeper. Why do you think you're losing colonies? And the first thing that they said is that they're losing colonies because of poor queen. So all um, that was their number one reason that they were losing colonies, poor queens. The number two, this is from the beekeepers survey that we did. The number two reason was starvation. The number two reason was starvation. Uh, and the number three reason was varroa mites, which you also might expect. I mean, varroa mites, I think, is our number one problem still in beekeeping, just from bee health perspective. The fourth reason was colony collapse disorder. Uh, and then the last thing in the, in the top, well, actually tied for, uh, tied with CCD was weather related. They had 40% alive, 39% alive. Queen failure was the number one reason for colonies dying. Because we were, that could also have been beekeeper or, or researcher induced. We were in these colonies quite a bit, looking for the queens and looking at marked queens and stuff like that. So we could have added to that number. But still, queen failure was the number one reason. So if we came back to that colony, and it had tried to requeen and it, you know whatever and hadn't made it then that was queen failure 15 percent had, had noticeable varroa problems seven percent uh, had ccd like symptoms and then it goes down from there uh, nosema was a small indicator here but it's amazing that at least on this this limited commercial survey the same kind of trend showed up that queen problems were huge uh followed by varroa and then ccd came in here a third in our in our case but it matches those symptoms. So if you're trying to manage and produce healthier bees, we've got issues with maintaining healthy queens, and we've known that for a long time. Uh, the other thing to do is make sure you've got varroa under control, and then maybe these other things will take care of themselves. That is kind of striking. Uh, most of us wouldn't want to operate with a 40% with a you know, survivorship in our operation, but these commercial guys are, are up against that a lot. Um, the other thing, just in some of this pathogen analysis, um, the non-CCD are minuscule amounts of things in that foundation. But I wouldn't be too concerned about it. If you're trying to be truly organic, then you need to do something like a starter strip or look for other sources of wax because there are some things there. But I don't think it's that. I don't think it's that big a concern in general. Yeah, 